all right um hi guys a very good e evening uh, hopefully you are able to see me hear me and also um see the screen so i think everybody is here so we can get started uh, with the session so again as always i have zoom chat open i have youtube live open on the side so wherever you are um, i will be able to uh, read the chat and also you know answer um, your questions if there are any and yes if there are any um, you know doubts or questions you can keep putting them in the chat and we'll keep discussing them uh, one by one so before we jump in again a bunch of quick updates for you uh, number one again everything has been updated in the repository so uh, we did not really write the code in the last session so there's nothing from there but i will be updating the uh, sample project document soon other than that uh, the link is already there over here right so in this repository you can find the link to all 10 sessions which have happened before this is session 11. now uh, in this particular session we are going to start with javascript so again we have discussed html css and bootstrap so far we have also done a little bit of revision as well um, and i have also given you a good idea on the project bit as well in the previous session so the project topics have been prepared. They will be sent to you shortly. Expect that today or tomorrow latest, right? So I have received an update from the team that the project topics are good to go. So those will be shared with you really soon. Um, so yes, you can, you can get ready for that as well. But uh, like I said, I'll be guiding you through the entire project creation journey as well, step by step, right? Um, another thing is I have noticed that a lot of you are joining in late, um, which is not um, good because you miss the starting point and that would lead to you not understanding the rest of the session as well, um, you know, as everything is connected. So we start at six o'clock sharp. Um, I wait for three, four minutes, right, so that everybody uh, joins in, but try to join at six sharp and because we always start on time. Right. So that's something that you should uh, try to keep in mind, um, because, again, I still see that there are still people who are joining in. Um, but yes. So hopefully uh, you keep that in mind from the next session onwards. And like I said, in this one, we are starting a new topic, which is JavaScript. Now, JavaScript will require three to four sessions it will depend on how um, you know uh, we understand the topics but we'll have three to four sessions on javascript and then we move to react right so react node express that's what's coming up one by one um, in the next couple of sessions so again we have had eight um, topic sessions and then two revision sessions um, is what we have had so far now we are on session 11. again all the recordings of the previous sessions are available in the link shown on the screen so in case you missed a session uh, in case the topic is not clear, you can always go and check the link and, you know, figure that out. Uh, perfect. Let's jump into the today's agenda. So again, we'll quickly take a look at what we have seen so far. Uh, just a quick look at that. Then we move into JavaScript and the rest of the agenda is pretty much just JavaScript. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the Chrome developer tools in a little bit more detail. I remember showing them to you when we were talking about the box model. So I showed you where we can see the box model in the console or in chrome uh, but today we'll spend a little more time on the other developer tools that chrome provides i'll show you some of them and some things that we use most often uh, then we'll move to javascript so we'll discuss how to run it in the browser how to run it in vs code and finally we'll take a look at a little bit of html plus javascript um, kind of a thing Right. So again, I just want uh, in today's session, I just want to give you an understanding of what JavaScript is, what it can do for us and how can we integrate it with what we already know, though that's pretty much what the agenda is. And if time permits, we'll talk about data types and variables in JavaScript. Um, that's again an if. So if we have time, we'll discuss that. Otherwise, we'll take it up in the next session. So, yes, let's jump in and get started. Um, here's what we've already seen with CSS and HTML so far. We have seen how to add all sorts of content. Uh, then we have seen how to work with the box model. We have seen how to work with positioning in CSS. And now we've also discussed responsive design uh, with both CSS and Bootstrap. Right? So we've already done all of these things. Uh, again, responsive design is a very crucial aspect 
aspect of a web application and we'll need the same setup when we work with react as well so that's again something that we will come back to when we start discussing react right uh, then we have also seen bootstrap um i think in the revision session uh, you also made a project with bootstrap right the one that uh, my friend took so you also made a project over there right so that's bootstrap it's basically a library it gives us a bunch of ready-made components which we can use right so again we have explored this as well and now we come to javascript so again we have covered html which is adding content css that styling and arranging that content which was added and finally now we have javascript so javascript is basically used um, to add functionality and logic right so the core purpose of javascript is to allow us to add functionality and logic but only to our front end right uh, we will also use javascript for the back end but what we are focusing on now is only javascript that is essential for the user side of things now where do we need it well we need it in a lot of places like detecting a button click right uh, when the user wants to type something in the form and we want to check if the format is proper we call it form validation again there we need javascript if we are creating any application which is not connected to the database it's only a front-end application then we need javascript to perform all sorts of logic right let us say that you're creating a game uh, or you're creating something like that right where you want to read input from the user or get something from the user again whatever front-end functionality and logic we will create uh, we will do that with the help of javascript right so that's basically what javascript is for functionality and logic they are connected right but we are not talking about databases just yet so that will come in later on for now we are just talking about functionality that the user can provide for example you click on the like button you write a comment you enter the comment all those logic all that functionality is run with or is implemented with javascript right uh, in addition to this javascript is also used in animations in a lot of cases again i'll show you one library later on uh, which we can use to add animations as well but again javascript is essential for that right uh, when it comes to responsiveness again javascript lets us create those responsive behaviors right for example the menu should shrink on the phone it should become that hamburger style icon that we see uh, on the other end on a laptop we should see a full sized menu so so that kind of stuff can also be done with JavaScript. And in fact, when we use the bootstrap navbar, we are actually using JavaScript behind the scenes or other bootstrap is using it behind the scenes, right? Um, to get that done for us. So again, we use it in a lot of different cases. So again, the idea is HTML is for adding content to the screen, right? All sorts of content. Then we have CSS. CSS is used for styling and positioning or arranging that content on the screen and also making it responsive. And then now we are adding JavaScript to the mix, which lets us write some logic and functionality. So there are three very different languages, right? And there are three very different things. They have three very different tasks. Again, the idea is we call it separation of concerns. So the idea is one language is focused on one specific concern. So HTML deals with adding content, CSS deals with styling and arranging it, and JavaScript deals with adding the required logic and functionality. Uh, all other things like fetching data from the backend, working with the backend, all of those things are also done with JavaScript, but we'll discuss that later when we move to the backend side of things. So JavaScript is probably the only language, right? The only programming language which works with both front-end as well as back-end, right? Because in case of other languages like Python or Java, uh, they don't really work with front-end. Python is only back-end. Java is only back-end. Right? You don't use them for front-end. So basically, even if we use Python or Java for back-end, we still have to use JavaScript or React for front-end. So that's how the setup is. JavaScript is the only language which can be used on both front end as well as back end. That is why we are learning it, right? It's one of the uh, most versatile languages in that sense that it can be used in both places. We have front end frameworks like React, Angular, Vue in JavaScript, and we also have back end frameworks like Node Express as well in JavaScript. 
which is not the case with any other language, right? So you will not find any front-end uh, framework with Python. You will not find any front-end framework with Java because again, like we discussed earlier, the browser only understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is why no matter what you do for the backend, for front-end, you don't have a choice. These are the only three languages which we use for the front-end, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it. Right. That's basically um, what we have. Right. Perfect. Now let's jump into what JavaScript um, or how can we actually use JavaScript for this? We need to take a quick look at the Chrome developer tools. So again, let me just share my screen uh, with Chrome open. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at these developer tools. So here is the browser. Right. Um, I'll just open any website for now. Let me just open um, google.com, right? And let's see other developer tools here. So I usually prefer using dark themes on my system. So you will see everything is dark, right? The theme that I have selected is dark. Otherwise, you will see a white page here. Then again, you can change that in the settings. But in my case, I usually um, prefer darker themes all across. Even on my phone, you will see most of what I use is a dark theme. You can probably tell me your preference um, in the chat, whether you prefer the light theme or the dark theme. But yes, I usually prefer um, a darker theme. Uh, perfect. So now how do we access these developer tools? Well, we have a bunch of different ways to do it. We can right click and go to inspect element. This will pull up the developer tools. Right. Again, this is Safari. Let me actually close this. I don't really want to do this in Safari. So just one second. And let me pull up Chrome instead. Because again, Safari developer tools are not up to the, not as good rather as Chrome's. So here is Chrome. Again, you can right click and click on inspect. So that will pull up the developer tools on the side, as you can see. Uh, you can also go to settings, which is the three dots, then click on more tools. And that takes us to developer tools. And there's also this shortcut, which you can see in windows. It is F 11. If I remember correctly on a Mac, you have this uh, option plus command plus um, I that pulls up the developer tools. So again, depending on the uh, device, you can open that up. Right. So either way, let me open it up. The simplest is just right click and inspect. This is the developer tools. And again, we have seen this in brief when we were working with uh, the box model in CSS, right? But let me give you a quick tour of, um, you know, um, what this is. So on the left hand side, we get the option to change it to responsive, or we can also disable that. And that will basically make it the default setup. So this is how it opens up in default view. We have two buttons here. So pay attention to the cursor. The cursor is right here, if you can see it now. So the first button that we have on the top here, right, right about uh, here. So let me just zoom in that. Right. So this button, let me just highlight it for you. This button, the first button that we have here, this is element selector, right? So this element selector button basically is responsible or lets us pick an element from the screen and we can see everything associated with that element. So for example, if I click on that button, and I click on any other element. Let's say I click on this button, Google search, right? You can see it immediately takes us to the HTML code for that button. So again, it is an input field. And then it also opens up all the styles on the bottom here, which is the CSS code for that button. Right? You can see the box model here and it changes the button as well. So notice how the button looks like right? when I basically hover my mouse over these things. You can see this is the padding, this is the border, this is the margin. We can see those things live on the button. So that's basically um, what this lets us do. So whenever we want to, let's say we are on any other website and we just want to see how something has been implemented. So that's where we can use this op option. That's the first option uh, that we have in these developer tools, which is really helpful. Then the button next to it, the button next to it, this button, this device toggle, is basically a responsive toggle button. So again, if I click on that, it pulls up another menu on the top, which is for responsiveness. So now we can see how the website looks on a phone, how it looks on a tablet, how it looks on a laptop. And we can also switch between devices. We have a bunch of different options here, right? So we have an iPad, an iPhone, 
uh, android phones like pixel 7 we have laptop size we have responsive which is we can drag it around to see different views etc and we can also go to edit right? and here we can also see other devices if you want to enable them you just have to check it here and it will be enabled in the list we also have other options which we will not discuss so we have these throttling etc so again if you are if you want to test this on a very low end mobile phone you can choose that right if you want to test it on a high end phone you can choose that so there are all of these other options that are available as well but then again uh, those are a couple of things that we can uh, work with right so that's what we have in terms of responsiveness again we've seen this already but uh, just wanted to repeat that bit so let me remove that uh, let me disable that as well right now after this the next few uh, options on that line or in that menu elements console sources and if you click on these arrows we have a bunch of other options as well like you can see so we'll explore them one by one as and when we need them for now we are going to focus on the console so elements is where we see the entire html as you can see and when you hover your mouse over here it will automatically highlight the relevant parts on the screen right so for example this is the top menu right if i expand it and i click on one of these right let's say we go to one specific link over here you can see this is the profile link this is the gmail and images part again you can see there's an iframe here then if i just expand on this again there's another iframe here there's a document some something like that you can see right so all of those things are there so as in when you hover it hover over it here it will automatically highlight the relevant portions uh, on the output right so you can see whenever we hover over it it basically highlights different sections of the page that's basically how it works uh, with the element section so again there there should be an image somewhere uh, with the logo you can see this is an image right this is the google logo you can even click on the link to see it opens up the logo on a new tab in a new tab right so this is the logo that is being used in this case again we can see all the different styles like there's a width attribute applied to it like you can see and right? we also have other attributes like height if you see there is also the alt attribute over here there is a class that is applied so we can see everything that they have done then again we have the input button we have those two buttons there's a form all of those things can be seen over here and then similarly in the styles whichever element you pick you can see the styles for those you can also toggle these from here so if i just change this color to let's say hash #fff you will notice that live it changes in the browser as well obviously it doesn't affect the google website if you just refresh it all the changes are gone but we can experiment with this and we can try out a couple of things over here right so again if you want to try different things on your website this is how you would do it right? so let me just refresh so we go back to the default style uh, that is available and you can see it changes back to the normal style so again we can see some changes um, live over here which is a good way to test things out right then the next tab that we have which is what we use for javascript is this console tab so console is basically a place in google chrome or within the browser this is available on all browsers obviously where we can run some javascript code right so we can write some javascript code within the browser and it will automatically work over there that's basically what the console is right so how this works well let me just say 2 plus 3 and you can see it immediately gives me five let me just zoom in so that we can see this better right so two plus three directly immediately gives us five similarly we can write any other code let's say we write console.log um hello right so this is basically again we'll discuss this in detail but this is basically javascript code to print hello on the screen as you can see it just responds with hello right so just like this we can write a bunch of javascript and everything will work fine over here as well so we can say hello plus there so this will again give the combined result hello there in the console so this area console is what we also see in the terminal in vs code so that is called the console this is where all the output from the code will typically be again when we will develop with javascript we will discuss that uh, whenever we want to test things out when or whenever we want to see sample data what is going on in the code we use the console output for that so we'll use this console a lot when we are working with javascript 
right? So again, this is how we can access the console. It's very simple. You can right click, go to inspect and then switch to the console. Again, when we refresh the page, it is gone. And all the changes that we will make are gone once you refresh, because this is still front end. Right? We are not talking about back end yet. We are still on front end. So this is how that works. Again, you'll be able to see some other issues as well. So there is some problem with cookies. Again, some privacy things. Um, mostly it is all cookie. You can see out of 199 issues were cookie issues. So again, that's fine. We don't have to worry about those. But more importantly, when we will work in, with our code, we will be able to see our issues over here as well. And so console will show us all the problems and issues that we will encounter in our project as well. Right. So again, uh, we use this for success messages, failure things, just to test things out. Um, you know, there was this one company. Do you guys know about Razorpay? Have you heard of the company Razorpay? Put a yes in the chat or a no. Uh, if you know what Razorpay is. Right. So most of you have heard about them. Uh, so Razorpay is basically a payments platform. Like the name says Razorpay. And it is a, a, a B2B platform. So basically when you're buying something from another website, you can pay through Razorpay. It is widely used by freelancers uh, and, and other businesses who do online, who take you know e-commerce orders basically. So it's a payment platform. And what they did was, right, they did a very cool thing. So they were recruiting developers. And what they've done is they added the job description. They added the developer position details in the console, right? So for people who are really curious, they opened their website. Um, and if they saw the console, like if you go to razorpay.com and then if you see the console, you would be able to find the job description over here because they would, they thought or rather, you know, it made sense that uh, people who are really curious, who are real developers, they would actually explore the console. And that's where they would find the job description. Of course, they've removed it now. There is nothing here now, but they've added, they did add this once. Uh, I, I read that in a report somewhere. So they did add it in the console over here. Right? So that's, that's, uh, that was a really cool thing that they did, right? Because they knew that people who are really curious will explore the console. And there they were like, we are hiring apply from here. So again, you know, there are companies who, who keep doing those kind of things. But yes, anyway, the point is, uh, whenever we are, um, you know, looking at any errors, testing things out, connections, database, all of that, we will explore all of those errors and stuff like that in the console. Even today, if you open a bunch of different websites, you might find different errors in the console. So for instance, if I just open one project here, and if we just look at the console, right, we will be able to see there are some issues um, some suggestions, etc., that will show up. So, of course, there are no issues here. This is a production level website, but you can see it says deprecated feature use. And, and again, you know, there are a bunch of these um, errors and issues, warnings rather, that this gives us. And again, you know, we have a bunch of different things um, that we can fix by looking at these issues. So, that's basically what the console is, and this is how we can access it. Again, we can directly write all JavaScript code within the console. And for example, let's say we write a function add, and then we just say that this function will return a plus b for, for instance, right? So if this is my setup, again, we have to add pockets and stuff, but the point is this will work. Fine. So if I say a comma b, and then if you say return a plus b, right? Then this is going to work fine. And then if this say add five comma 10, and we should get 15. As you can see, we can create functions directly within the console. We can write every single JavaScript line or, or JavaScript code and it will work fine. For example, we can say if 5 is greater than 10, right? Then return to, to right? Um, else return false. So we can just write it like this and then again it will return false. Right? So I think I misspelled the spelling there. Else spelling is wrong. If I just put the right spelling, then again, this should uh, basically work fine. Right? So again, we have a bunch of different things that we can do. It is illegal return statement. That's because it's a function. Uh, we should go for console.log, right? true and false. That should be fine because return can only work inside a function. You can say console.log 
and then false and this should then work fine right you can see it gives us false and if i just clear it so we can type the command clear to clear the console and then we can just say if 15 is greater than 10 this time we get true right again i'm not telling you the code i'm just telling you that everything that we can do with javascript we can write it over here as well in fact we can also change things on the screen from the console right so for example let us take this um let's just you know let's just add one more button so we can add a button by saying let button let's say let new button is equal to document dot create element right? we have a uh, we have a function called create element it's a complicated process i'll tell you more about it but we can create an element like this right then we can go ahead and we can attach this button onto the screen right so we can say for example uh, we can read the body of the page and we can give this button to the body and then we can add functionality to that and perform a bunch of these things right so again that's what javascript can let us do it can let us control html and css we'll have an entire session on that that's the next session right so this is how we can write all javascript uh, we can also manipulate existing styles right so for example we can say that uh, you know let's say document dot uh, body dot background or we can say dot style right and then dot uh let's say we go for background color and we can change the value we can say hash fff for instance right and this will uh you know work you can see as soon as i hit enter my body turns white in color but the rest of it is still black so again we can do these kind of manipulations to html styles to css uh, to HTML elements, to CSS styles, etc., etc., using JavaScript. We call this DOM. That's document object manipulation. It's a very important skill that we will discuss in more detail in the next session. Again, it's called DOM. That's document object manipulation. Right now that we have understood how to do this in the console, let's take a look at how we can actually do this in VS Code. Right. So I'm going to close off Chrome here and switch over to VS Code now. Uh, just give me a minute. I have a lot of windows open and let me just share it with you. So here is the screen. Uh, yes, there we go. So this is VS code again. I'll make a new file. Let's go for a new file or we can make a new folder as well. So let's open folder. I already have a folder with me uh, for today's session. So that's session 11. And I'll just open that up. Now, in this particular folder, what I will do is I will just create a JavaScript file. So we typically call it script. We typically uh, typically call it script.js. You can call it whatever you want. But then again, just like we use the name index as a convention, uh, we use or styles as a convention for CSS. We use script.js as a convention for JavaScript, right? And then again, we can write all the JavaScript code here. Let's say console.log hello. And then we can just hit the play button and this will pull this up in the terminal as you can see and we get hello over here right so this is how we can write javascript in vs code for this you need to have one extension installed which is called code runner so again if you haven't installed this already this is the extension that you need for this code runner right so make sure you install this and then you can go to settings here go to extension settings and there is one setting which you have to enable, which is run this in terminal. So there's a setting which says whether to run code in integrated terminal, you have to check it. By default, it is unchecked, right? So you have to go to the extensions, choose code runner, install it. After you install it, go to extension settings and then scroll to this setting, run in terminal and enable it. If you don't enable this, then it will try to open this in the browser and it will not work. Right. So that setting needs to be enabled for this to work. So again, we can write all our JavaScript code here. We can say five plus 10, just like that. And we can run it and you can see the console. We can see the output over there. So this just needs to be inside console.log. We can say five plus 10 and it will give us 15 uh, in the console. Right. You can see we get 15. If I just zoom in, 
there we can see 15 right so that's how this uh, basically works right so that's the basic setup of how to run this in visual studio code okay we just have to save it as a js file and more importantly we need to have that code runner extension installed right once we have that extension we should be able to directly run this in the terminal itself by clicking on this run code button right perfect so that brings us back to the slides right so we have seen the chrome developer tools uh, we've also discussed the about the console in the browser and we have also seen how to write a script in vs code so again you have to install the extension code runner and once you install that you get a play button right so you get the play button and that's basically what we need to use in order to work with this right so here we were uh, yes, here we are. So we have the code runner extension. Again, we have seen how to work with developer tools. We have seen how to work with the console. And we have also seen how to write scripts in VS Code. Right? These three things I've already shown you. Uh, now let's take a quick round of questions at this point before we actually start discussing JavaScript. Right? If you have any um, issues or errors, let me know and I will help you out. Uh, so there is one question regarding another extension called a live server. A live server can only be used with an HTML page, right? So unless you have an HTML page, uh, you can't really use live server. It works with CSS and JavaScript, but the trigger needs to be HTML, right? So if I basically make another file index.html, give it the boilerplate and put a heading saying hello, then I can run live server. So how do we run this? Well, we have right click. And we can say open with live server for people who are wondering what this is live server is another extension which you can install right? and this basically lets us refresh the page automatically or it automatically refreshes the page for us so we don't have to save and reload the browser every time uh, we can directly it will directly reload it whenever we save our file right so that's another extension which we have again i'll tell you more about this one later when we get to react as of now we don't really need it much Right. So this is what we have. Right. And uh, yes. So again, for running a script in VS code, all we have to do is create a JS file. So a file with a dot JS extension, like you can see here, script dot JS, and you need to have the code runner extension. So in the extensions, there's something called code runner. It looks like this dot run. So you can just install this extension and that should be it. Uh, there is one setting change which you have to make so go to settings extension settings and search for run code in terminal so this is the setting run in terminal you have to enable it by default it is disabled so you have to enable it and then everything will work fine right so this is how you can run javascript in vs code uh, let me just take a look at the chat if there are any other questions i'll quickly answer them and then we'll jump to uh the next part no, uh, sorry, there is no boilerplate as such for JavaScript because it is a custom language, right? We can write whatever we want. Uh, there is no structure to a JavaScript file. So we don't really need the um, boilerplate as such. Right? I'll tell you how to add it to HTML in just a minute. But uh, yes, uh, we'll get to that. Let me just see if there are any other questions. And... Uh, Yes, so again, we are coding in VS code. That's Visual Studio code. Again, in the installation document, everything is written. So this is what, you know, we are um, using over here, right? And then again, you have the GitHub link. I have shared it dozens and dozens of times. It's the 11th session now. So I'm hoping everybody has the link to the repository and answered no platform. Uh, Right. So yes, uh, to run the JS code, we have we can write the code over here. Then we see this play button on the top right. So once we install code runner, this button, as you can see, I'm highlighting it now. Uh, it becomes visible on the top right. I think my video might hide that for you. Uh, but yes, uh, it's on the top right. So if I just, um, I'll just close the video for one second and that should make it visible. Um, let me just do that. So I'll just hide the video for a second and highlight it for you. So this is the um, button that I'm talking about. So there is this play button, which is available. Uh, it is a code runner thing. So once you install the code runner extension, 
only then this button will be uh, enabled, right? So once this button is enabled, you just have to click on this button and that will automatically run the code. Right. So now I think you should be able to see the button uh, once the camera is off. Right. So again, you just have to click on that button and that will automatically pull up the terminal and that's how we can run the code. Right. So if I just click on it, it will again, you can see pull up the terminal and give us the output in the terminal. So again, that is what we wrote 5 plus 10, that's 15. So yes, this is how we can run the JavaScript code. Again, we have also seen the console in the browser. So this is the browser console to access it. We can right click inspect and then head to the console tab. And again, whatever code we write over here will work directly in the console itself. We can also manipulate HTML and CSS using JavaScript code, which we will talk a little more about uh, later in, in a lot of detail later, actually, because that's a very important topic uh, that we need to discuss. It's called document object manipulation. And uh, yes, so there is only one change that you need to do uh, for the extension, which is you have to go to the code runner extension, click on the settings, and then you go to extension settings. Over here, there's a setting called run code in terminal. Over here, you can see it says run in terminal. So you just have to check this box. By default, this is unchecked, right? So you just have to check this and then it should be fine, right? Uh, again, don't worry about the JavaScript code yet. I see a few questions regarding console.log, what it is, etc. I will um, do that. Right. So yes, now we are hopefully um, I've answered your question. I've just given a short recap of the console and all of that. So hopefully that works. Um, yes. Now coming back to the JavaScript bit. Right. So let me just go back here and uh, again, yes, you can run this in Notepad, etc. But again, that is a lot of effort. Um, you need to open that in the browser then. So if you run it in the Notepad, you need to link it with HTML and open that in a browser and only then it will make sense. Uh, I will share the assignment links later on. It's already there in the GitHub repository. So you can just access it from there. Right? But again, I will share it towards the end of the session. Uh, again, whatever doubts you have, please put it in the chat. I cannot give you mic access. Uh, there are so many people, it's not possible. So yes. Um, Okay, done. I'm not answering any assignment, email uh, questions right now. We are focusing on the concept. So if you have a concept specific question, let me know. All other questions uh, will be answered later. For now, I'm just focusing on the concepts. Yes, so we'll discuss that. Um, uh, Hema, Hema, right? Uh, Hema Naga will discuss that, right? We'll discuss that as well. Rahul, again, trust me, you don't want to run this through a notepad. Please install VS Code. It's a very simple installation, hardly 100 MB in size, and you should be good. And if you want to do it with notepad, you have to connect it to index.html, and, and that is how it will work. Again, um, Manjula, right? Please put your question in the chat. Uh, you've been raising hand so many times. I cannot give you mic access. I cannot uh, stress on that enough. So please stop doing that. Put your question in the chat. I will help you out. Uh, only if you can put it in the chat. Um, right. Um, again, so if it's an assignment question, I am not answering it now. If it's a GitHub question, I am not answering it now. That is not part of the session right now. So if you have a topic question, uh, please let me know. Right, let's jump into the next part now. Uh, this is where I will show you how to connect an HTML page with a JavaScript code. Right, So connecting HTML and JavaScript. Uh, we've already seen how to connect HTML and CSS. In the chat, can you quickly tell me how can we connect HTML with CSS? In the chat, can you quickly tell me what do we use, um, which um, tag do we use to connect HTML and CSS?
Uh, yes, so the correct answer is link, right? Remember, we use the link tag to connect HTML and CSS, right? That's the setup. Uh, we don't use the script tag. Script is used for JavaScript, right? So we use the link tag to connect HTML and CSS, right? Uh, again, so people who are raising hands, it's a request. Please don't. I cannot give you mic access. I've said this so many times. Whatever question you have, please put it in the chat. And again, try to keep the question relevant to the topic. Again, if it's an access thing, college code assignment, I've answered those dozens of times. Please watch any previous recording and you will be able to find answers to those questions. Right? Uh, perfect. So now coming to how to connect HTML and JavaScript, let me quickly show you. So let's head back to VS Code over here. Right now we have two files. We have an index.html and we have a script.js. Right? Now in the script, we have a single output console.log 5 plus 10. Let's say that we want to connect this script to our HTML. How do we do this? Well, we have a script tag, right? So we put script opening, closing, and then we put source, script source and the name of the file. This is how we connect HTML to JavaScript. Again, for CSS, if I create styles.css and I add some style, let's say for the body, we add a background color, say pink, right? If I just add this kind of a style, we can connect that using link and then styles.css, right? So this is how we can put all three technologies together. We have HTML, we have CSS with the link tag, and we have JavaScript with the script tag, right? So this is how we can put all three things in a single page. Now, what we can do is we can open this up with browser. So let me go ahead and run this. And now you can see this is opened up. We have our CSS being applied. Background color is now pink. The hello is coming from HTML. And if we open the console, so go to inspect and then go to console, you will see the result 15. You can see script.js. So this line proves that our JavaScript is also working fine. You can see here, right? it says script.js line one. So basically this output 15 is coming from this file script.js. This is our JavaScript, right? So this is how we put everything together into a single file. This is very, very, very important because for all real world use cases, this is what we will do. We will have an HTML file. We will have a CSS file and we have a separate JavaScript file and then we connect them like so, right? So we use the link tag to connect CSS. And then we use the script tag to connect JavaScript. Let me know if this makes sense. Again, I will show that to you one more time. So let me go back to VS code. I will just remove everything that I have just written right, so that I can tell you. So let me just delete everything. Again, we have a script file here, which is in a different file. This is the code for from the script file. We have a CSS file. This is the code from the CSS file. We are just changing the background color to pink. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll put the HTML boilerplate again. That's exclamation and tab. So if you're wondering how the boilerplate comes in, that's exclamation key and tab. Right? So that gives us the boilerplate now to connect the CSS. So let me write that down CSS connection. And we do this with the help of the link tag. Right? So this is the link tag, right? And then, then we have the JS connection or JavaScript connection that we do in the body. So this we do with the script tag. And then we say script source equal to script.js. We can also directly write the JavaScript over here, right? We can just say, for example, console.log10. This will also work fine. But again, typically we want to keep it in a separate file. Just like we have internal CSS where we can write the CSS within a style tag. We can also write JavaScript directly within the script. But then again, typically we don't do this. We connect it. We use external script right? like this. So again, opening and closing script tags and then the source attribute. And then we can have our normal HTML with some dummy data like so. Right. So this is how we can put everything together. And again, now if I go back and run this, so let's open it up. Then you can see we have our HTML, the pink color is coming from CSS. And if we go to inspect and console, we'll see 15. This also shows us which line this is coming from. So script.js, you can even click on that and it shows you your JavaScript code. As you can see, the browser shows us all three files, index, CSS, and JavaScript. 
So the browser has recognized that these are the connected files to this HTML. If you remove a connection, then this will disappear. Right? So if you remove a connection now, even though the style file is in the folder, it is not shown in the browser because it is not linked to the document. So again, the browser will only read those files that are linked to our HTML file. You can see as soon as I add the link back, it shows up over here again. Right. So this is how we basically uh, work with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This is how we can put everything together. Again, there's the console section where we see JavaScript element bottom. We see all the CSS code. And then again, on the top, we see our HTML. So if you just see the paragraph, this is what we have added. And then we can also see the JavaScript line and we can also see in the head, the style sheet. So again, this is how we can put all three things together. It's a very important thing to know. So please make sure you have understood this properly, because again, this is something that we will do plenty of times. And yes, people who are asking what the tool is, it is VS code. We are using visual studio code for this, right? Um, so yes, this is how we can connect HTML with JavaScript. And then what we can do is we can perform a bunch of modifications with JavaScript as well, right? For example, let me give you a simple example. Again, we will discuss this code in detail later, but I'm just giving you a quick example for now, right? So what we can do is let's say that there is a button that I add, let's say click or change color. For example, that's the name that we give and this is how we can add a button. And then what you can do is I am attaching another attribute called on click. And then let's call change. Color. Now this change color is a function which we will write in JavaScript. So let's go to our script here. We can write a function to change color. Right? And what this function will do is it will take the button. So let's give it the button an ID or let's take the paragraph. Let's give this an ID of let's say, uh, special for example right now what we do is we say document dot get element by id let's call it let's use the id special and then let's change the background color let's change the background color to black and then what we'll do is we'll change the text color to white so again all the css that we have discussed works over here as well we can change it to white right now, if we go ahead and see the output, when I click on change color, you will notice the paragraph's color will change. Right now, the paragraph is black text with no, no background. When I click on this button, change color, you will see the paragraph gets black background and white text. So this modification is happening with the help of our JavaScript code. Right? So this is what JavaScript lets us do. It allows us to add functionality to what we have on the screen. Just like this, we can read data from input fields. We can take other sorts of input from the user. Uh, we can perform all sorts of functionality and outputs as well. Right? Let me show you a couple of simple things. Um, so again, for example, let us say that you want to show an alert box to the user. Kind, you know, we see these a lot, cookie consent boxes. We see some other alerts, uh, show notifications, yes, no, save password, yes, no. So that's nothing but alert. So we have document dot alert, right? Uh, sorry, you know, document window dot alert. And this basically creates an alert box. Simple, right? Let's just say this is an alert. Again, again, this alert box will load up as soon as the page loads up. So you can see now this alert box shows up. And then again, the text is actually uh, over here. You can see this is an alert, right? And we can say, okay, to dismiss it. Again, if we refresh the page, the alert box will be thrown again. This is an alert. So this can be done with the help of this one line window dot alert, right? We have another thing called window dot prompt. And this is what we can do to read something from the user. Let's say enter your age or enter your name, for example, right? So this prompt will basically throw, uh, this will, first of all, it will show up after the alert box. So alert shows up first. And now we get this prompt. You can see, we can type the Right. We can type the uh, uh, details in, as you can see over here. And that is how we can take input from the user. So we can just say, okay. And that's how it works. Right. So this is what um, JavaScript is. This is what JavaScript and letters do. We can then also obviously go ahead and store them. Let's say we create name equal to, so we store that value 
let's call it user name so name is a keyword actually and then we can say cons or we can alert after this right so we can say hello um let's say hello comma and then plus uh, we can put user name so what this will do is this will create a simple application where we are reading the name from the user let's enter the name i say okay and then it shows me that value back right? let's put my name and then it says hello keep as you can see right so this is the kind of functionality and logic that we can actually build you know when working with javascript and that's effectively what javascript lets us do so again we can manipulate html css in all ways we can create elements dynamically delete elements from the screen uh, change their properties change their styles attach listeners to them basically like you know button click stuff like that all of this is what we can do with the help of javascript right so again this is how we can put everything together let me know if this makes sense now so again if you have any questions at this point let me take them uh, regarding connections between the two html plus javascript then i have a simple question for you but before that let me take some questions if there are any in the chat again let's keep the questions relevant to the topic so if you have anything relevant to the topic uh please let me know and okay the first question is what is meant by dynamic change uh so kiran dynamic change refers to the idea of um the web page reloading or rather things on the page changing without the web page reloading right so typically when you um, use a real world application let's say like linkedin uh, where you get a new message now as soon as you get a new message the entire page does not reload and you just see a new pop up in the message section so that is dynamic reload right that's basically the setup um, that's what we call dynamic on the other hand if it was static then you would have to reload the entire page to see the change that would be static that's that's basically how it works again shankar i am starting from the very basics i have literally just shown you one line of code that is how to connect javascript with html right? there is no advanced code written yet i am just giving you examples of what javascript can do we will discuss all the code again right but then again i am starting uh, from the very basic code itself right um again so uh, if you are seeing this error who is this rupa you get this node error that is basically means that you haven't installed node js again in the installation document i have very particularly written steps to install everything please check the document it's in the repository please go ahead and install node js and then it should be fine uh, either that or you would not have enabled that code runner setting so those two reasons could cause that issue right and uh, please show js code one there is nothing in the js code we'll discuss that code in detail later but anyway here is the code and okay let's check youtube as well so there's a question which is is javascript same like java no not at all uh, there is nothing common between java and javascript right there is nothing common between java and javascript they are two completely different languages they are two completely different languages uh, in fact javascript was called live script earlier but just to get some popularity
Oh, yes. Sorry about that. My Wi-Fi got disconnected for a second. Uh, I am back here. Mm. Yes. So for people who are asking about this line of code or whatever you have written here, don't worry about it. We will discuss that in detail in the next couple of sessions. I was just trying to give you an idea of what uh, we can do with JavaScript. So document dot get element by ID is basically uh, used to read an HTML element from the screen. So what we're seeing here is get the element with the ID special, which is our paragraph, right? This is where we have the ID special. So it just means get that element from the, uh, from HTML and then modify the style like so. So that's basically what that means. Uh, Rupa, you cannot run CSS code, right? So it has to be within HTML. There is, you cannot run CSS on its own. So you just have to create an HTML file and that is the only file that will run. Um, so yes, you cannot run CSS directly. If you just try to do it this way, it will not work, right? You, it will say code language not found, no support. So the only way to run CSS is through HTML. Yes, Ahari, this is the only way to link HTML with JavaScript. There is no other way. Uh, as far as normal HTML JavaScript is concerned, this is the only way to do it. Right. And uh, uh, yes, again, like I was saying before that, um, um, before I stopped uh, talking because of the Wi-Fi, uh, was, was that uh, uh, Java and JavaScript are completely different languages. Right? There is nothing common between um, Java and JavaScript. So they are two completely different things. Uh, the only similarity is the name. That's it. There is nothing else that is similar. Java is in fact, what we call an object oriented programming language. And on the other hand, JavaScript is what we call object based uh, programming language. So even the fundamentals of both the languages are very different, right? So there is nothing common between them, uh, except for the name. So yes, just remember that again, uh, they are two very different things. There is nothing common between them. Now I have a quick question for you. Uh, the question is, why do you think, right? So when we add the CSS, we add it in the head of the HTML document. But when we add JavaScript, we add it in the body of the HTML document. Uh, what do you think is the reason for this? Uh, Mahesh, we use the link tag to connect HTML and CSS. It is a tag, which means you cannot use it in the CSS file. You can only use it in an HTML file. Right? So you cannot use it for CSS. It is used for connecting HTML and CSS. Right? Uh, yes. Now the question for you is, right? why do you think we add head uh, or we add CSS in the head, but we add script in the body? That's the question. So again, give it a thought. And, um, you know, let's discuss that in just a minute, but I want you to think about this when working with CSS, why do we actually use, um, you know, a link to connect it? And then why do we use script inside the body? So why is that? Okay, so there are a few responses. Some of you are saying to improve the uh, performance of the code. Okay. Uh, because CSS loads faster in the head. Uh, okay. Uh, so there are a couple of responses. Let me tell you the actual reason. And the actual reason for this right, is because uh, we want the data to show up first or we want the content to show up first and then we want the functionality, right? So the body basically contains the content, right? So unless all the content in the page has shown up, we don't really want the user to be able to click on anything. So imagine if we just, um, you know, put this um, particular script at the top of the content over here, then what this means is the functionality is ready even before the content is loaded. We don't want that, obviously. First, the button should become visible. Only then the user should be able to click on it, right? So that is the reason why we do this way. So we put the script inside the body 
and that too at the end of the body right again uh, so teja if your uh, this uh, exclamation plus ender is not working please install es7 um where is that extension let me show you uh, there's an extension called es6 and uh, this one no uh, not this one this one uh, you can install this extension babel this should add that shortcut for you there are also other extensions um let me find the one that i am using so that it works again in some cases it might work in some cases it might not first up make sure you have dot html extension for the file only then it will work right and uh, other than that we need like you could optionally use an es6 extension something like this uh, this should fix it for you again you can add this and check but um, that should basically you know there should be one of these extensions which gets the job done and i i don't have any i think my vs code itself contains that default setup but yes um, you could use one of these extensions let me see what i have yes i think my setup is coming from this one uh, react snippets that's what's working for me but otherwise also just a simple es6 setup um, should should work so you can just install a relevant extension and that should be it and uh, uh, i can't really disable the chat because that's where all the questions are but yes i see a lot of uh, unrequired discussion going on there but uh, yes i i am only focusing on the questions that are there in the chat so i need to keep it open um yes so yes like i said the whole point of adding uh, the script at the end of the body it is a standard interview question that is why i am focusing on like i am stressing on it so much is that um right uh, we should be able to uh Uh, yes so um this is a standard interview question which is basically that you know we are um, you know we are required to use script source and then we um, use it at the end of the body and then link is used in the head because again uh, we want the styles to show up first uh, or the content to show up first and then we want the functionality enabled right so that's the setup and that's how we work with it uh perfect now the next bit that we are covering the final bit since we have a couple of minutes before we get to the questions uh, let me quickly tell you so i'll not write any code for this i'll just walk you through it really quickly right um this bit basically is about data types and variables in javascript right so there are a bunch of different programming languages and most of them work in different ways uh the way javascript works right or the way javascript gets this done is basically through different types of data that it supports and then again there are some simple types some complicated types things like that uh, when it comes to simple data types javascript has something like this right? so first up we have numbers uh, numbers are all sorts of things right so that's integers so negative numbers zero positive numbers uh, and then decimal numbers as well right? so obviously all of those things uh fall under the category of numbers in terms of javascript data types uh, we don't really have to specify the type of data we can just give the variable a name and a value so we can say for example salary is equal to this much right or we can say a uh, tax rate equal to this much and that automatically javascript is smart enough to automatically determine which type of data it is based on the value that we get right then the next type of data is a string so string is character or text data it could mean a single character it could mean a word a phrase a sentence or a paragraph anything and everything to do with text uh, is stored as a string in javascript right so that's what we have and no so shake uh, this does not work the same way those are c data types int char float double they are not available in javascript javascript has number string right then we have uh, boolean so boolean is not available in some other languages but yes in javascript we have boolean that's true or false right so true is of course true and false is false but those are the words so we don't say 0 1 minus 1 none of that we use true 
and false lower case lower case right so lower case true lower case false that's boolean then we have something called object so this is a key value setup it's a special type of data let me quickly show you an example of this right so let's just create all of these one by one so let me just delete this let's say that we have something called salary is equal to let's say we have a 25000 rupee salary so this is a number this is a number uh, we can also say something like age equal to 30 this is also a number right we can say count equal to 0 this is also a number uh, we can say difference is equal to or you know let's put loss let's say profit uh, equal to minus 5000 right, or minus 50000 so this is also a number right so similarly we have all these numbers which we can use in javascript so decimal numbers um, you know, positive number, zero, negative, everything works the same way. We don't really have to put out any data type um, as such, right? We just have to specify it like this. So these are numbers in JavaScript. There are also ways to put scientific notations. For example, we can say size of earth, just a random example, but we can say, you know, something like um, e to the power of 10, right? So that's e plus 10. We have these scientific notations as well. So 10 e plus 10, 10 e minus 10, uh, all those kinds of scientific notations are also supported, right? So that's how we have very big or very small numbers. They are represented using that scientific notation, right? Then the next type of data is string data. So again, we can have user name is equal to, uh, let's say, John. This is a string. They can be single or double quotes. Then we can say, um, you know, agree. Uh, equal to it could be y or n right so this this is a again a string a character data right so it could be y or n uh, a single character it could also contain special symbols right let's say for example uh, we put something like um, you know let's say password again we should not put password like this but we could just say you know password one two three hash at the date something like this so all this special character data also goes as string right then uh, the next couple of things that we have are boolean so again we can say let's say is um, student this could be a true or false values we put two like this t r u e this is a boolean data type right then we can say is faculty for example let's say false so this is how we can put false in javascript so this is the boolean type right? let me also just specify this so this is number um this is string boolean and then we have something called object now object is a special type of data which is a key value pair right so for example what we can do is we can just say um you know let's say um let's go for profile we can say user profile is equal to and we can create key value pairs like this so within this what we can do is we can put a key value pair so let's say you know user Let's say this is um, hello123. This could be a username. Again, we can put a comma. We can say we can put the uh, age as a number here. And then we can go for mobile. We can put a mobile number like so. Then we can go for email. We can put random at hello.com, something like this. So this combination or collection of key value pairs, this is what a profile, basically an object is. So it's a special data type which lets us group uh, multiple pieces together, multiple pieces of data together. So that's what we have uh, in terms of the profile. Again, we can just print all of the say console.log profile, right? And we can just check it out. So if I just run this directly here itself, then you can see the profile gets printed out with all these details. Right? So this is an object that is available in JavaScript, right? So that's how it works. Right? These are some of the most fundamental types of data that JavaScript supports. Okay, So this is how the whole data bit works um, in JavaScript. Now, the next bit, the next quick thing that we have to discuss before we move to questions for today is, um, you know, uh, basically this part, which is our variables. Now, variables, one is we have just seen, so they are normal variables that we have created. Variables are containers that we can use to store data. Right? So basically everything that we have seen just now, our variables, right? all the names that we have given were variables. And this is the default type called VAR. 
So if we don't specify anything, which is what we have done here, they are of the type var, var for variable. So effectively, this code is the same as saying this. We don't have to type var, it's an optional uh, term. So by default, JavaScript assumes it to be a variable value. And so again, whenever we are giving a user defined name over here, that is a variable looks like this works like this. So this is what a variable is. Now there are two other types of variables, special variables that JavaScript provides us. Uh, the first is called let So L E T let again, we'll discuss about this in more detail, but the let variable is basically scope specific, right? So what that means is if we have a separate piece of code like this, and we have a scope like this, then we, if we put let, uh, let me just give an example. So let's say let X is equal to 10. Right? And then within this, we say let X is equal to 20. So this would create two separate X variables. So if we basically do um, console.log inside of this, right? And then we do another console.log outside of this then we'll understand the difference, right? So what let would do is it creates a local copy of that, right? So if I just go ahead and run this now, then you will see we get 20 and 10. So the first console log comes from this bracket, which is one block of code. And the other one comes from outside, which is this X. Now, if you make a modification to this, let's say X equal to 30, if you just change it, then you will notice the outer value will not change. It will not get affected by it, right? Uh, okay, let's see. So if I just run this again, you will see we get 30 and 10, right? So again, the outer value of 10 did not get affected by this because this is where local X is. If we don't make it local, if I just go for normal VAR, if we don't make it a let variable, then we'll see the difference. So if I just remove it from here, right? And if you just run this now, then you will see. So we are printing it inside once and then outside again. If I just do it this way, then you will see both values are 30, 30, right? So what that means is when we make a change within the block, it still uh, modifies the outer value because outside also it is now 30, as you can see. Right? So this is the difference between const, uh, this is the difference between VAR and let. It's a very common question again that is asked in interviews. So that's how um, the difference is we can understand the difference when we use a block kind of a setup like so. Uh, finally, we have a third type of variable called const. So const variables cannot be modified. Now, if I run this, this will give us an error. It should give us an error and it should say that X cannot be modified or a constant value cannot be modified. And so if I run this, you can see it says assignment to constant variable. This is the problem. So because we cannot have a modification of a constant value. So again, typically tax rates uh, or other data pieces that should not change, should be constant throughout the code. We use const for that, right? Again, so these are the different types of variables that we have in JavaScript. VAR is the normal one. Then we have let, which is a block specific setup. And then we have const uh, wherein the values cannot be modified. Uh, for people who are getting node related errors, you have not installed Node.js, so please install it. Again, the installation instructions are there in the document on the in the repository. If I just show that to you quickly. So if you just open the GitHub repository, you will see that there is a document which says software installation instructions. This is the last thing. Open it up and you have instructions for everything, right? So please read the document, please install everything. This is missing in your case. So if you see node is not a command, the steps are written over here. You can also verify your installation by running these commands. So again, I've given you all the steps. Please refer to the document and install this. Right? That's what's missing, which is why you're getting all those uh, node command not found related errors, right? So yes, I hope that helps. And uh, yes, that brings us to the end of the concepts as such um, for today. Uh, sure, I will send the GitHub link as well. Again, in the chat, just give me a second. Here you go. And uh, let me just paste it. Again, I don't have the attendance link, uh, you guys. It is sent by the team. So they will send it uh, soon. By the time we are about to reach the end of the session, they will send the attendance link, uh, please don't 
tell that to me. I really can't give you that because I don't have it. Um, yes. So I've put this in the YouTube chat as well as the Zoom chat. So again, please get the link from there and keep it with you. Right. And yes, uh, coming to the questions now. So based on what we have just discussed, there are two questions for you. Um, here is the first one. So the first question is, which data type represents a collection of key value pairs in JavaScript? Again, I'll give you a minute. Please put your answers in the chat. And then in a minute, let's discuss what the correct answer is. Right. So yes, the correct answer here is an object, which is option two. Right. Perfect. Well done. Uh, next up, the second question, the last question for, actually, we have one more question after this. Uh, this is the second question. So again, take a minute, put your answer in the chat, and then we'll go to the third question. All right. So I just want to clear out a quick confusion here. A lot of you seem confused about array and object because in the YouTube chat, everybody said array. But the correct answer to the previous question is actually object. There is nothing explicitly called an array in JavaScript. Obviously, we have um, a list. We'll talk more about that. But what we have seen in this session today, we have not talked about arrays. Right? We have talked about objects. So remember this piece of code that we have written this is an object and this is a key value pair you can see username is the key hello one two three is the value age is the key 54 is the value so this is the key value pair this is an object it's not called an array it's an object so object is the correct answer for the previous question right now for this particular question what is the purpose of the const keyword the correct option is option two it declares a constant variable within block scope so remember we just created a constant as well and this was a value that we could not change, right? Again, uh, we had written this code over here, right? We said const x equal to 10 and x equal to 30. And this gives us an error. It says assignment to a constant variable. So we cannot modify constant values. Right? That's what the const variable does. So that's the correct answer. Here is the last question for today. So again, take a minute, think about it very carefully and then put your answer in the chat. Right. Perfect. Uh, so the correct 
consider this one is again option two that is let let is the keyword again we have seen this example i am not sure why uh, there is confusion remember i showed you an example where we made x like this and then another x like this uh, let x equal to 20 right so this is what we did with let let is used to create block specific variables so option two let here is the correct answer again this is a standard interview question the difference between var const and let there are three different ways of uh, giving or creating variables and they have three very different work or meanings var is the most generic thing let is block scope and const again const is also block scope but it is uh, basically used to create constant values which do not change throughout the runtime of the application, right? So this is what, um, you know, we have, right? Perfect. So that's the setup in terms of the questions uh, for today. And yes, that brings us to the end of this part. Uh, now quickly come into the assignment bit, right? Uh, sure. So Hari, uh, basically everything that we created by default, this is var. This means we can modify them anywhere and it will work, right? So even if we modify that over here inside another block, let's say we change agree to N. So initially agree is Y on line eight, if you can see, right? Now we have changed it to N within another block. This will work fine in the case of a VAR. So this is what we call global scope. You define it once, you create it once, and then you can modify it anywhere else in the code. That's global scope. Then we have something called let. So if you have let x equal to 10 and then another variable with the same name, let x equal to 20, right? Then whatever changes we make within this block will stay within the block. So for example, if I say x equal to 30 over here, right? And then I run console.log, this will not affect the outer value you will see. So when I run this, right, you will see we get 30. Uh, let me run this again. We should get two values, right? We get 30 and 10. So 30 is coming from inside the block, but the outside value of X is still 10. It is not affected by whatever is happening within the block. This is block scope. This is let and const again would mean we can't modify the value. So if you say const X equal to 20 and then we go to modify it X equal to 30, we will get an error. It should say assignment to a const variable like you can see. It says assignment to constant variable. So we cannot modify an existing value um, in the case of a const. Again, this is block scope. The outer X is no problem because the inner X is a const. So that's how const works. That's the difference between the three. Uh, hopefully that makes sense, right? Now uh, coming quickly to the assignment before we wrap up, I'll just take two more minutes to tell you what needs to be done in the assignment here. So uh, if I just open the repository, again, I have added the assignment link and the LMS link in the repository over here, if you can see, right? So the LMS link is also here. The assignment link is also here. So you can open the LMS from here. Right? It takes you to the login page. And then once you log in, you can also go to the assignment from this link, right? Once you open the assignment, let me quickly open it up just a second. So again, pay very close attention to this assignment part because you have to submit it by Friday. Right? You have to submit it by Friday. Today is already Monday. So you don't have a lot of time. Right? Let me just put the assignment link. And this is the link. So here you go. This is what the assignment looks like. Again, on the screen, you can now see the assignment. This is the assignment that we are working on. Right? So you can click on start now. You can go to complete. And this should pull up the assignment. This is a table which you have to create using HTML and CSS. You can see this is a table and this is your assignment, right? Once you create this, uh, once you go to this assignment, what you have to do is you have to add submission. So here you can add your submission title and you have to put the files. You have to put two files, HTML file and CSS file. So for example, I say table assignment. This is the name of my submission over here on the right hand side. Then I can click on browse files right? and I can access the files wherever they are in my system. Right? So let's open up uh, one of the previous sessions. Let's go to session nine, for example, or wherever we have some code. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to select index.css. This will upload my index file. Again, I will go to browse files. I will select styles.css. This will upload my CSS file. 
after both files are uploaded, then you can submit the assignment, right? So this is a, you have to submit. Please make sure you submit it properly with both files. The marks again will not be allocated directly because this is a manual test. So we will check the code manually and we will give you uh, the marks later. We don't have automatic mark submission for this. So again, you might see uh, zero in this case once you submit because there is no grading directly assigned to this assignment. And you have to just upload your files and submit them. And then the grade will be added later on after it is reviewed or after it is checked. Right. So that is the set up in terms of assignment. Yes, if you've used internal styles, no problem. If you've put both things uh, again um, in the same file, that's not a problem, but you have to upload your solution. That is important. Right? If you don't upload your solution, then it is not going to be considered. Okay. So yes, I'm putting the assignment link in the chat again. If you want to access the assignment link, please go from there. Um, it is also in the repository. So please make sure you access it from the repository. That is the only link that you need to have. Again, for people who are show, who are saying it is showing zero to you, uh, don't worry. The assignment will be graded manually, right? So that's the setup. Again, so Pavni, uh, I can't really help you with the laptop issue. I don't even understand the issue you're saying. Temporary account, no login opening. I don't understand how that could be. Uh, if it's a normal Windows machine, it should be fine. You can just get it formatted and then that should fix it. Uh, otherwise, please borrow a friend's machine, a friend's laptop for half an hour, one hour and attempt the assignment. Um, anyway, it's a one hour timer. Right? I'm pretty sure you should be able to manage that. Uh, again, if you're still facing an issue, go to a repair shop and get it fixed. That's the only suggestion that I can give you. Again, Mahesh, I have just shown you how to do the assignment. So please go ahead and you can watch the recording again. So this is your assignment, right? You have to upload both files as you can see. I've uploaded the HTML and CSS. So browse files, upload your HTML, go to browse files, upload your CSS, add the title of the assignment and then submit. This is how you have to submit the assignment, right? So yes, that's, that is the setup. And yes, please make sure you use Visual Studio code for the, um, you know, for the uh, code writing. That is going to be the ID that we use for the rest of the session as well. Right. Uh, yes, I've informed the team to put the feedback link. So please give them two to three minutes. Uh, you should be able to see the feedback links in the chat as well. And uh, yes, regarding the project topics and the project groups, uh, they will be shared soon. Uh, hopefully by tonight or tomorrow, you should be able to get those. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the session today. And uh, yes, so for people who want to connect, um, here is the GitHub, uh, uh, sorry, here is the LinkedIn. Uh, if you just want to connect, I've given that in the chat as well. So in case you want to connect, you can just send a request um, over there. And yes, that's basically it. Um, thank you so much guys for attending. I hope this works fine. And yeah, I'll see you guys on Wednesday, six o'clock, where we'll continue our discussion on JavaScript. So yes, that's it for this one. Have a great day. Um, see you guys on Wednesday, right? I'll try to finish the assignment off as soon as you can. The deadline is Friday. The deadline for the assignment is Friday. So remember that, finish it off as soon as you can. And yes, that's, that's it for the day. Uh, thank you so much for attending. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.